Hey guys, uh, just setting things up. I'm about to start making some masks. I'm um, just making the base skeleton right now. Uh, it's going to be extended face mask. Doing this one right here with uh, some teeth and horns and stuff like that. But yeah, for those of you interested in seeing how this works, here it is. Let me know if you guys have questions and stuff. I just started off making, making it like this. It, so the plastic melts and then it starts drying. So I just have to get like the base shape like that. And just make sure to make it a little thicker so it doesn't fall. Hey everyone. Yeah, thanks guys. I'll try to keep up with the chat. Didn't expect this many people's first TikTok live stream. <laughs> but yeah, you just uh, just kind of shape things like this. When you first start the getting the layout, you can keep things very loose. You don't really have to commit to shapes at first. Just to make sure you know the general direction you're going with, like right here, like you can see, like I'm not really going for anything specific. I'm just trying to attach the edges to the point that I'm trying to get to. Okay, so then got that. Probably gonna make it slightly shorter, maybe. But now I just gotta kind of make sure the bottom. Here, let me make this a little thicker for a second. Oh, thanks uh, for the person who said they love the bird masks. Yeah, that one's called Beak Face. Uh, the Beak Face mask is from A Friend's Nightmare. They, uh, that was the second mask I've made. Or I made a half mask before that that was also like a bird, but it was like a crow, so it was like a normal animal, you know? Um, and then they saw that and wanted me to make uh, Beak Face because, you know, it's a bird-ish thing. <laughs> and you guys can hear me with this mask on, right? I, I forgot to check the audio. But, um, yeah, that was, that was a fun one. People have been wanting that mask a lot. This one's kind of based off beak face as far as like the shape of it goes, but it's going to be different. It's going to have like teeth, horns and stuff. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just, uh, thickening the middle line right here. Let's get my air conditioner back on. Yeah, I'm just sticking in this middle line right here so that way it can hold up on its own and get start getting the base shape of the skeleton down. Yeah, let me know if you guys have questions and stuff too. Oh, and then uh, for those of you that don't already follow me on Instagram, I do have Instagram, which I kind of post more stuff on, uh, like more behind the scenes. I freaking, freaking Spotify ads. Um, yeah, I do. I do more behind the scenes content on Instagram. If any of you guys want to see a little more. I also do like animation, music, stuff like that. 
actually going to be releasing a music video pretty soon for a new song for my second album that I'm working on. But yeah. Oh, here we go. So yeah, see, like now it's staying in place now, like that. So I just want to kind of make sure that it's flat. Okay. Okay. So, I think I want to have it go like this. First time trying this angle for uh, live streaming. Trying to do do this so I can live stream and get a good recording because everybody's asking for tutorials and stuff. So, I'm gonna see if I can pull something together. Okay. All right. So now I got that more or less. Now I'm gonna try to connect it here. So I'm just like getting the basic shape of it with loose strands and slowly connecting them together. I got that side. Now the other side looks like it's needs to be straightened a bit. So I can just melt this off. There you go. Make sure it's straight. And how I make sure, uh, how I adjust the shapes on the early stages like this one, it's just sticks. I can just uh, bend it and then just add more and then that should keep it in place if I add enough. that little bit that I'm missing right here. Cool. Okay, and start adding this end. Oh, there you go. That little piece of plastic right there is holding it in place for me. I don't even need to use my hands for that. But I will to make sure that it stays in place. <laughs> yeah. And all I care about right now is just for speed, just getting this thing the shape I want. Because I can adjust everything later at these early stages, as long as I keep it everything thin like this. Let me know if you guys have questions for anybody new joining. Let me check the comments quick.
Uh, if that person is still there that asks, how long does it take to make a mask? Uh, they, uh, I haven't made one like fully uh, like straight for a while, but when I actually have time to work on them, uh, like for full days at a time, it'll take me three to four days usually. But I've been like really uh, spreading out how long I've been work at spreading out when I've been working on these, so they take a little bit longer when I don't work on them all day. Oh, and thanks, Seven, if you're still watching about ch uh, checking out my music on Instagram. Let me see. I'm uh, going backhanded, left-handed here because I'm just trying to check out the comments. Okay, I think I'm caught up. It was like. When it started, I couldn't even see all the comments that started. Oh, there you go. Okay, we're back at the beginning. Okay, so yeah, now we got the sides there. Um, that should be good. Yeah, uh, this one's going to be a little bit shorter. This isn't going to be a beak face. It's going to be the kind of similar shape to it. Let me see. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is going to have a bunch of teeth on the sides here, so... Got to make sure that the top part is going to be a little thicker, but we're just going to work on the outer shell first. Okay, just make sure that this part right here retains its shape because it's a little loose right here. You see how I can just go like this? It needs to be at least at least thick enough so it doesn't come apart. If you're going to move on to the next strand. Here we go. All right, so now we just kind of go across here. And we're just going to kind of web this across. Oops, this is this came off one second. There you go. All right, we're just going to kind of web across here. So we're not caring that it looks flat right now um, for this part. Because so what we're going to do afterwards come on we do afterwards is rounded out we just want to get that first layer there okay so now i can put my hand in there and for those of you that saw the second video that i made this is where you burn your fingers off <laughs> But you don't really burn it if you keep moving a little bit. You just got to make sure that your finger doesn't stay in the hot part too long. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Let's see, that's a good angle. There you go. Like the skeleton, you can kind of just do whatever with. Um, basically, the result is to try to get like a grid look kind of thing. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen the skeletons before, but um, base, basic, basically, you're just kind of trying, like, if you've seen like 3D uh, models kind of thing where they kind of like look like a bunch of triangles and squares and stuff, it's kind of like that where it's like you want to break it down into simple shapes. So then you can round it out yourself afterwards. So right now I'm just getting the middle parts of these. So then uh, I can actually make the curve without doing too much work. Yeah, and thanks for everybody watching because this is my first TikTok live stream. See people coming in and out and staying. I'm actually streaming to multiple platforms at once. I'm streaming to Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Twitch. I don't really have people on YouTube or Twitch, but this app, uh, I'm using this thing called Lula TV, and it lets me to stream multiple platforms at once, so I thought, why not? Okay. Go to the 
this way. See there, yeah. There you go. That's a good shape. And even if we don't get the shapes completely correct for any given point kind of thing, like I can, I can just keep adjusting it. Like I can melt pieces off and readjust them. And if worse comes to worse, I have a heat gun over here. Uh, there we go. Yeah, this thing. Gosh, uh, whatever. Yeah, this one. <laughs> uh, and the heat gun allows everything to melt. And when it's all soft, you can basically do whatever you want with it. Shape, reshape it, completely destroy it, whatever you want. Just curious because I don't know many people on TikTok. Where are you guys watching from on TikTok? Like, what? Uh, I don't know if you guys are watching the US or like a different state. I'm from uh, California. And for those of you that didn't see since the beginning, um, I started off with just this part, the thick part, and then we've already made this whole layout in, what's it been? Uh, can't see how long I've been streaming for, at least I can't, I don't know where that is, but not too long. I think about like 20 minutes or so. So this stuff is pretty quick. This stuff is pretty quick if you know how to um, get the shapes quick. Is anybody currently watching trying to make masks themselves or just here for entertainment? Start making thick ones across here. Get the actual shapes now. side. I'm 
picking it up. Okay. Yeah, that works. Cool. Okay. Um, I think I'm probably going to round this part because it's not going to be a beak. So... Okay, let's just get the base first. Let me know if you guys have any questions or anything. I try to move fast, so then that way... It's more about like getting shapes at this point kind of thing. Like when you start filling things in, that's when you kind of like, you like go really slow. But um, also like, I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like moving fast for 3D pen stuff, since it's melting plastic, I feel like it helps it bond it better kind of thing. Um, Cause you're making more layers the thinner you go because it's, uh, it's getting stretched. So it's not able to just pile on top of itself. I don't know. Who knows? That might not be correct. Oh, well, that's why I'm oh, sorry. I couldn't see you guys' responses. I was looking at the wrong spot. Um, the first time using this app. Okay, so yeah, uh, I see. Got someone from Connecticut. That's cool. Um, I've been making these uh, these things with my pen, the masks, um, since October. Uh, not for Halloween or anything. I was just making them to go to conventions and stuff like that. And um, What's it called? Yeah, I was making them go to conventions and uh, just, uh, you know, have something cool to wear. Uh, and then people started really liking them. So I decided to make them for other people that wanted to. Because, um, you know, since it was October, I, I'm a scare actor. So I worked at a haunt. Uh, and I knew there would probably be people at the haunt that would want some masks. And yeah, there were. There was quite a few. So I started making them for people and um, yeah, I might actually make another personal one soon for uh, like, I'm going to make a music video. I said or, uh, earlier in the stream, uh, but I'm, not this music video, but the next one is going to feature a new mask. I'm going to make, it's going to have like a bunch of decayed flesh and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, for the person who was clarifying months or years or whatever, no, like, uh yeah no it's just october i haven't been doing this not that long at all oh i'll go grab my first mask that i made it's right over here i'm sure you guys have seen this one a lot on there yeah this is the first the first mask i ever made uh this is the second thing i ever made with a 3d pen so if you guys are interested in trying this out it doesn't it's not too difficult you definitely got to put a lot of patience towards it but it's not something i feel is like too hard as long as you have as long as you pay attention to like shapes and stuff like that and like you want like i actually learned off of youtube um yeah i actually learned off of youtube just watching like other people make 3d pen stuff but I thought of the mask thing. 
uh, myself. Like I just wanted to have like an, a moving jaw mask. And so I saw one other company does that, but they do it with latex masks. And I thought it'd be cool to be able to do it with a 3D pen. Um, so I decided to do it. And as far as I know, I'm the only one like really actually doing this. Like the way that I'm doing it at least. Because this stuff takes forever and you got to be crazy to do it. <laughs> But yeah, thanks for everybody that's joined just now. Or within the past minute, a couple minutes or so. Uh, we're just making a skeleton right now of the mask to get the basic shapes and stuff like that. This is based off of beak face, but it's not going to be beak face. It's going to be this thing with teeth and stuff. So we're going to round this off because it's not going to be actual beak. Right, so now we're just going to get these last couple shapes here. I'm just going to mark them out first. This part needs to be a little rounder. And the other side. So we're almost done with the skeleton for this side. The bottom part. And then we're going to do the top right after. And for the skeleton, you don't, you don't really want to worry about getting the... Um, like, we're going to put, like, horns and teeth on this thing. But for the skeleton... You don't really want to worry about all that yet. You want to get all the basic shapes, like the face kind of thing. Because it's a lot easier to do teeth and horns once you have everything laid out first. Also, you want, uh, like in the case of these type of masks, you want to make sure that they actually work correctly before you start adding any details like the horns and teeth, especially the teeth. The teeth needs to be very carefully aligned. Um, it's kind of harder because like I am making them for people. So I need to really make sure that like I account for any like error and stuff because people fa people's faces are different. Like my mask, mine's the first one I made. And if I have uh, pe other people with taller faces than me wear it, like it'll be like spread apart like this, but if people have like, like the same size face as me, it'll be there or like a little bit shorter. So now after the first one, I noticed that that happens to people. The, hey, what's up, Jeffrey? Uh, the ho that happens to people. Um, I, I I make the mask a little bit taller than they need to be now, 
uh, to make sure that even people with tall faces will be able to wear them kind of thing. Because it, uh, it's it's definitely better to have it going down on itself rather than being too far apart. Because if it doesn't, if it's too far apart, it's not going to close. But if it's too close, uh, there's not too much of a problem unless you do it way, you make it way too close. But it's uh, definitely worse to go smaller than it is to go bigger with these masks. So I tend to make them a little bigger than they need to be, which is cool. I'd rather have them be exaggerated and big than tiny. Okay, got, just got these little bits right here. Okay, cool. So I got this. Boom, boom. That works. Okay. Um. So I think before I make this less beak-like, I'm going to first work on the top here. So the thing I usually do first is make this a little taller because there's going to be it's going to be going up a bit. So I just um, I start by layering the plastic on top of itself, just making a thick little thing right here there you go it's definitely really hot this kind of burns but whatever So yeah, that's just to kind of gauge how high it's going to be. Um, oops. One second, got to go grab my computer charger. All right, here we go, so it doesn't die on the stream here. Boom, and boom, we are still alive. There we go. Yeah, what's up, guys? For everybody that just joined, we're making a uh, moving jaw mask here. Moving jaw, for those of you that haven't seen yet, like this. There we go. So we're going to, um, this one's a humanoid type mask, so it's more human like, but this one's going to be something like one of these right here, probably like this one they wanted. So it's going to be a longer face one. But yeah. I should probably just wear this while I stream, huh? And you adjust my hair. <laughs> there we go. I make these masks so you can pretty much do anything you want. Like, you can have your own hairstyle. You can climb. You can move your head. They will not fall off. Very functional. But, yeah. So, we're done with this bottom beak for now. And I'm working on this top piece. And right now, we're just kind of extending this up so we can make it a little bit taller. Um... Cause it's gonna, it's gonna have like stuff extending out. So we want to make sure to make it uh, proportionate to itself and just layer the plastic on top of itself like this. Got the second bit, now we're going for the third bit right here. There 
There we go. And for any other of you guys that do 3D printing work or pen work, um, I tend to use mic stands. I use mic stands for ever, everything. Um, and then these little, at least for Hatchbox, they put them in spools. You just put it through here on the mic stand and it spins. But yeah, that's what I'm doing on that side of the screen. I don't know if you can see that side of the screen on TikTok. Like it's still there. I have to check out how you guys see things after this. Yeah, okay, so we got that. All right, um, so now we just got the basic shapes going. Hold it out here so then it can cool. And once it's cool like that, and, oop, 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 oop. you don't break it. That's not, not what you do. <laughs> Just kind of thicken it up here. Just keeping things very loose. Probably gonna have it come something like this. Let's see. Thanks, Smitty. Yeah, I need to, need to post a few more. I don't actually work on masks way too often. Um, I have two lined up right now. So I actually have this one. And I have another one after this that I need to make. But I'm, I work on one mask at a time. I usually don't work on two at once uh, too often. I have done it. But I tend to work better when I can work on a mask um, straight kind of thing. Like all at once. Hey, Maria. What's up? Thanks for everybody joining in right now. We're making it a skeleton with this mask here. Getting all the base shapes down. Right, so, got that little thing. It's like an angler fish now. <laughs> and, yeah, I should make an angler fish. I love angler fish. That would be really cool. I have to make it so then it like does something like that, but not going to really be able to do it if I do it straight plastic like that. Because the only reason why it dangles like that with this is because it's thin. If I thicken it up, it's not going to do that. But I'll figure it out. That's something I definitely want to do in the future. Hello. See you there, though. Okay. I'm gonna slowly ring this up. Gonna let this cool for a second. Bend it how we want it. Come on, stick. There you go. Attach that. Oh, we're getting stuck here. Come with me. There you go. Right, and we can just kind of move this towards itself. Everything's right, gonna be super loose. Here we go. Make this a little thicker so it holds its own shape without me holding it. Right. 
just so you can kind of see what we've done so far there. Hello. Pellet? Yeah. Almost there. Start from the bottom. Yeah, let me know if any of you guys have questions, those of you that are coming in. Jordine, are you still there? What's up? This is so cool. I could watch this for hours. I have to watch this for hours because this thing takes days to do. <laughs> like this part uh, doesn't take too long, the skeleton stuff. Um... Like, this is probably the quickest aspect of it. For um, the skeleton, it's more about just experimenting and finding the right shapes you want. But, um, yeah, this stuff takes quite a long time. Like, uh, each step pretty much takes a day. It's like the skeleton. Um, that's quick. But, like, if there's a lot more, like, experimentation going on, it might take as long as the day. Uh, but then you can kind of start filling it in and stuff like that. Um, the filling in definitely takes a full day. And if you guys have seen me use my wood burning tool, uh, this smooths it out. So if you see my mask here, you can see like this part. This is just the natural 3D pen texture like you have it on here. That's just the normal, normal way this thing comes out. Now the teeth feel smoother. And I take this wood burning tool, I just burn it all the way so it smooths itself out and it's not all, uh, what do you call that? Like that. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> they have a person that said they, they love the mask. Yeah, this is my first mask that I ever made, for those of you that didn't hear that earlier. <laughs> what type of print are you using? Um, I'm guessing you mean what type of plastic am I using? Uh, if that's your question, oops, one sec, give me one second, let me adjust this. If you're asking what type of plastic I use, it's, um, ABS plastic. Like, the, the usual ones that people use are ABS and PLA. I use ABS just because, like, I've heard it's stronger, um, has a higher melting point, so that's always good. Um, you know, so that way, like, if you leave it in the car or something like that, it's not going to, like, you know, melt and warp and stuff like that. Um, also, I know Legos and some motorcycle helmets are made out of ABS. So that's definitely, uh, those are definitely good products that protect things. I mean, Legos protect, Legos protect themselves, but... <laughs> How many, let's see. Oop, one second, let me just keep up with these questions here. Type print. Uh, favorite color or animal? Favorite color is green. Uh, more specifically, like forest green. I don't have any of that here, but it is. Um, animal, probably turtle, as far as like realistic animals go. But I like like really like creatures in general so tend to go for more non-realistic stuff um how many masks have i made 
Um, I made at least ten. I I have them all saved on my phone, uh, so I can show people whenever I meet new people that I haven't seen, so they can kind of see the stuff I do. But um, I know I made at least ten. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, I've been doing this since October, for those of you that didn't already hear that. And, let me see. Yeah. You know, the 10 masks and counting. I'm working on two. This is one of two masks that I'm working on. Kind of getting that curve by just moving my hand with the plastic while it's melting and drying or cooling, I mean. Come on, stick to itself. You have to also make sure that it's plastic is sticking to itself. Sometimes it likes to break apart if you move too fast. And I definitely try to move fast. But you're kind of limited on speed because of how the pen works. It only it has motor, it only goes so fast. So it's not like you can just go like ah. I mean you could, but it gets messy. <laughs> um show us your mask. This is the only one I have on me. Um the other ones I've sold, um I make them for people, so uh I'm gonna make one more personal mask for myself for a music video, but I haven't had time because <laughs> people keep ordering masks, which is great. Um and also I do animation, which also takes a ton of time. All the stuff I do takes way too much time to do. Well I really like doing them, so <laughs> um show us your mask, nice. How sick how it just stays in place. Yeah, like uh, like it stays in place like when you first do it like it doesn't stay in place like you see how it kind of wiggles there this little thin piece um that's because it's still warm while it's hot go away spotify ads um while it's still hot or warm or whatever it's gonna be able to bend and that's how you shape it the way you want to and then you get the shapes you want by by uh laying it cool but that's not enough, because you can see right here, this is already cool, right here. But unless I make it thicker, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna bend. It's like, um, like you know, if you have a piece of paper, that's gonna bend. If you have a stack of papers, that's not gonna bend as easily. So, same basic concept as that. No, his name is Mango. <laughs> Uh, Smitty has it right. My name is, in fact, Josh. Uh, oh, hey, Alina. That's, that's why someone says that. Hey, what's up? Uh, that's my haunt friend there, Alina. Um, we work at a haunt together, Fear of, ah, Fear Overload, Screen Park in Bay Area. Uh, but yeah, my name is Josh, but yes, online I go as Mango Claffer. You may call me either. I won't bite your fingers off if you say something weird. And thank you, Smitty, for saying it's awesome. Yeah, these are these are really fun to make. <laughs> but just gotta have a lot of patience for them. And I'm gonna be posting some tutorials on these soon. That's kind of why I'm doing this live stream. We'll see if I can make this into a video. Who knows? Um, but I just thought it would be cool to test out this new live stream app, Lula, uh, that I'm trying out. Um, but I will be posting how to make these base masks, like the face part. Um, I just get them from Party City. Um, those generic face masks, and I just make them thicker. I kind of show the process on how to do that, because, I mean, you can just jump into it. But there's definitely a, a lot of things that I learned, like subtle things that'll make your life either way easier or will make things faster or more accurate kind of thing. Because um, 
yeah, plastic uh, 3D pens are really easy to work with. There's a lot of things, uh, a lot of different techniques that you learn along the way when you're experimenting. And some things work for doing some tasks and others not as much. But um, yeah, and then I also made a mask strap tutorial. Like, I don't know if you can see from there, but there's like the stick strap here and then two straps here for these masks to make them be able to move. You can use just a simple like one strap thing. But the way I make my straps to make it super secure, like they're not gonna fall off of you if you go upside down and stuff like that. And um, when I work at Haunts, I climb and go upside down and everything. So that's definitely a priority for me. Basically my rule for making things in general, if I can break it, I don't make it. And that means like through normal use kind of thing. Like, of course I'm not, I can break this if I throw it on the ground and I can stomp on it and stuff. But if you drop this thing, most more than likely it's gonna survive. As long as you don't throw it, you know, like on purpose. I've dropped this plenty of times. I'm a, I'm a very, very clumsy person. I was going to watch YouTube, but this is oddly satisfying. Yes. Live stream more mango. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be live streaming. This is the test, so I can live stream more. And I'm definitely going to. Um, and yeah, that's the oddly satisfying thing. Yes, the thing... It's very satisfying. Um, I don't know about like what watching it as a viewer, like constantly, constantly. But I know definitely people in person when they've watched me do these things, like they just get kind of fixed on the process of it because it's it is a weird thing. You don't see many people doing this stuff in general, especially making masks. Like as far as I know, I'm like the only guy like doing this. Uh, you know, more than for more than one project, because um, it is very, very time consuming. I mean, as you can see, this is all we've done so far. It's it, it's definitely a lot. Like, I mean, this is like a big thing, you know. But when it comes down to it, it is a pretty slow process. Process that takes days. I really need to readjust my mask straps on this one. This is like, this is my guinea pig mask. I do all my tests on this thing. Um, like when I first made the new, the new strap system, I made it one inch too short on the part that connects the two straps on the bottom mask. And that's how you kind of see me adjusting every once in a while. Uh, it's just when I try to talk, like sometimes it'll go up on my chin kind of thing. It just has to do with the back thing. But um, I just apply... Um, started using a new finish lately that protects my mask more and makes it really uh really makes the colors pop a lot more if you can see that yeah um i mean i don't think you would have noticed from video quality that i have on my iphone but definitely a very big difference um i mean this is this is a computer screen but my tiktok videos are all on my iphone my favorite video is when you ride the scooter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I started uh, riding a scooter back in August. Um, I didn't even have a car or anything before that. Uh, I got a scooter because I'm extremely poor. Like, I do not... I, I, I basically just make artwork to survive. Like, um, yeah, like, I, 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 I just want to be able to do what I want, you know? So I just make as much as I need, and that's pretty much it. But scooters are not that expensive. They're ex insanely cheap. Let me see, let me see. Yeah, scooters are insanely cheap. They cost like almost no gas, and they're a lot cheaper than a car to maintain, uh, as long as you take care of it. I did have one scooter before my current one, and um, yeah, that one is not around anymore. <laughs> um. Because I got a really cheap one, and then I was basically trying to see, like, how far you could push them kind of thing. Because I, I definitely push everything I use to the limit. I mean, but you see with this 3D pen, it's, like, meant for tiny little projects for, in general. Like, people would rather use a 3D printer. But um, I decided that I want to make gigantic projects with it. So, like, anything I use... 
uh, gets used to its absolute limit. And my scooter is definitely one of those. Uh, since the other one got messed up, the one that you see in the video, the yellow one, that's my current scooter. Like, that one's great. Um, and now that I know how to take care of scooters, that one's going to be with me for a while. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Definitely taking care of it a lot better than I did my first one. I got it really cheap too. I uh, got that one for like a thousand five hundred dollars. Great deal at this uh, scooter shop in the Bay Area, which is really cheap, <laughs> especially because it's like a Honda, which apparently are really good for scooters. One time I wrecked my dirt bike and scratched my face. Yeah, damn. Are we wearing a helmet at least? <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. Love, yeah, people are scared of scooters. I used to be scared of motorcycles. Uh, as in, not like you know, scared of them. Just like I didn't ever want to ride one because I was I was always scared of um, you know crashes and stuff like that. But um, I was actually I actually did deliveries for quite a few years on a normal bike, like a bicycle. And um, after my friend convinced me to get a scooter, um, I tried it and it, I pretty much just started driving it like super naturally. It's like really, really easy to um, get used to if you uh, if you already ride a bike. It's pretty easy. It's just heavier. So it's more about just managing the weight. And definitely turning is different because um, with a normal bike, you can actually turn the wheel but with a scooter or motorcycle, you don't really want to turn the wheel that much. You want to lean your body, which is, I think, the biggest difference between a bike and a scooter, for sure. Where are we going? We're going this way. Questions? Oh, yeah, you are wearing a helmet. Cool, yeah. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Let's put on some different music. I don't know if you guys can even hear that with this microphone, but whatever. Ah, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to look for anything right now. I'm just gonna replay that, that whole thing. Whatever. Okay, there we go. Uh, what kind of pen is that? It's a Scribbler V3. Um, I got it on Amazon. Um, yeah, Scribbler V3. It's a really good pen. Um, the only thing you want to make sure that you don't mess it up because for some reason they're replacement nozzles. Um, there's like this little, um, if you guys know what a washer is, it's like, I mean, it's not a sewing thing, but it's like this little round thing with the hole in the center and, um, as a heat resistant nylon washer. And, um, for some reason that isn't included with the replacement nozzles, which is usually what will mess up. If it messes up, um, but yeah, it comes with the pen, but it doesn't come with the replacement nozzles. And every time I've gotten a replacement nozzle, 